What good is the right to choose if we are not given the chance to do so? For over 40 years, this most basic of rights has been without the protection of law. In the U.S. alone, we have lost over 50 million lives to the evil that is abortion. Each one of us make up what I like to visualize, I'm a visualizer, as a large army that God has raised up to fight against the injustice of all matters concerning life. I believe that God is going, going to use us to tear down the flimsy and unsteady walls that are holding up abortion in this country. As we look around us today and view the evil that is amongst us, may we not become discouraged that kind of seems to be a, a pattern I'm sensing today, that God is speaking. Don't be discouraged. That the battle may seem too difficult or even sometimes nearly impossible to win. And the fact that pro-life legislation has been blocked in the House for many years, I would say has caused many to be discouraged. So I want to just remind you today, in your battle fatigue, sometimes we can get that way. We can feel a little bit like King Jehoshaphat did when he said, For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do. But he also went on to say, But our eyes are on you, Lord. My advice to Mr. Birch and to, to his uh, cronies is this, as quick as you can, find a church, go to an old-fashioned altar, get on your knees, and repent to Jesus, and he will forgive you. But I see in the near future an America that loves all its children, loves all its people. And, and I see an America where we understand that what our, our founding fathers said when they said that there are some truths that are self-evident. You don't need to go to a textbook and find a proof text. It is self-evident that we all deserve life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. How long? Not long. The mountain's going to be removed. Thank you, Reverend Cecil, for those strong scary words which all of us need to hear and let other people know. And now one of our very strong pro-life leaders here in Frankfurt is Senator Robert Stivers. Well, first of all, let me say thank you for coming out and inviting me to come over. But secondly, I have to tell you that we have a caucus meeting and business on the floor to take care of this afternoon, so I'm not going to be able to stay very long. You know, I appreciate the comments you made. Um, and I would imagine you're a pastor, but I'm not exactly sure your name. All right, Cecil, I, I appreciate those comments because you made something that you said about Black Lives Matter. I'm going to disagree with you to an extent. All lives matter. And we shouldn't distinguish black or white. We are all humans in the eyes of God, and the color does not make a difference. I've been through many battles in 18 years in the legislature. And some people will say that, you know, you're probably a pretty tough guy for being involved in this process. But I think you all need to know the mentality and the psyche of some of its leaders. And I don't say this out of a position of arrogance. I'm just the holder of the seat as the Senate president. But I can tell you for all my accomplishments, for whatever I've done, all my successes, there is one day that sticks in my mind before all the 18 years I've served here as a practicing lawyer, all the successes and cases that I've had. 
and that was October 5th, 1989. Now you're all wondering, what does that have to do with uh, this group and what happened here? All four of my children were born by C-section, an amazing feat in and of itself. But that October 5th, 1989, was the day my first child was born. And I am not that tough. Because when I saw 10 toes, and, and I have to describe this, a small rear end and a male organ, and I knew I had a son, I knew I had a child. The most precious thing that I have seen in 53 years of my life happened four times, but that was the first time I saw my child born. And as I come here to the legislature, I wonder, and some people think you may be somewhat radical, you may be ultra conservative. I've generally never been defined like that. But life begins at conception. And a child when has been brought into the world at that time. And that child, through me and other legislators, will always have a voice that it has a right to live. That is what I'm about. And many of my colleagues that you will see stand here before you in the Senate, and many of them out in the House. And you spoke, Cecil, of hypocrisy. Well, I can tell you this. If you truly believe in right to life issues, then Democrat or Republican, House or Senate, you express those beliefs. You just don't talk about those beliefs you show that actions are louder than words. And if you hear a Democrat or Republican say they are for your bill and they are for pro-life legislation, then you tell them to do one thing. Sign a discharge petition. If it's not coming to the floor, bring it to the floor and prove that you are truly a pro-life legislator, a pro-life leader. Thank you, Senator Stivers. I know we're not supposed to be for cloning, but sometimes when you hear such passionate thoughts, then you wish we did have more Senator Stivers. I know that uh, there are many wonderful legislators that are awaiting to say a few words. I uh, would like to just have two right now, if you don't mind. Thanks, Margie. I'm Chris McDaniel. I'm Chris McDaniel from Kenton County. I represent the 23rd Senate District. And, uh, you know, it's always dangerous when you go after a pastor that was that fiery and that inspirational. So uh, I'll, I'll keep it brief. But uh, rest assured, today we had our first pro-life vote in the Kentucky State Senate in the committee. We passed the informed consent bill out of committee. It will go. That's right. It will go to the floor of the Kentucky State Senate. And with what President Cyber said, I challenge you, be here on the day of the vote, pack the chambers. We can pack committee rooms when we talk about wage rates on construction projects. We can pack committee rooms when we talk about pensions, but we can't pack committee rooms when we talk about life. So the challenge to you, help us. Help us pack those committee rooms. Let Kentuckians see that we are committed to life, not just in the Senate, but in the House and across this Commonwealth. Whether it's on the third floor, whether it's on the first floor, we will remain committed to life as Kentuckians. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much this afternoon. Uh, I am Representative David Hale, just newly elected to the House of Representatives and the legislature, and I'm so honored to be here today. I am so much uh, thankful for this organization and this group. Uh, I'm from a little town called Frenchburg, Kentucky. I represent the 74th Legislative District and I am so honored. Uh, I, I was so blessed by God to be given the opportunity 
to come and serve in this body. But not only have I been blessed to come and serve in this body, God, through the direction of people, placed me here. But I'm also a full-time senior pastor, have been for many, many years in my area. And I am a pro-lifer all the way. And I believe that legislation can be passed in, in this place that can change this hideous act that we are here today uh, talking about. We may not stop it immediately. We can curb it. But I thank God someday we have the opportunity to possibly stop this completely. And I am so honored to stand here and represent you and I and, and can promise you that I will support this legislation wholeheartedly and look forward to anything that I can do to uh, stop this movement of abortion. And I uh, am honored that they have asked me to speak today and I thank you so much. It is a great honor of mine to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. We are so pleased to have the president of the Teens for Life from Louisville, Ben Norton. Thank you, Margie. We are standing here today in defense of a right that comes before all other rights, the right to life. What good is the right to liberty if we do not have a life in which to be free? What good is the right to choose if we are not given the chance to do so? For over 40 years, this most basic of rights has been without the protection of law. In the U.S. alone, we have lost over 50 million lives to the evil that is abortion. These 50 million children, their talents, their contributions to society have been lost. They represent the loss of an entire generation. My name is Ben Norton, and I am a member of a new generation, the pro-life generation. I am president of a Teens for Life group based in Louisville. We are proud to have members from schools all across Jefferson County, many of whom are present here today. Together, we are striving to promote a culture of life throughout our community. We participate in such programs as 40 Days for Life and volunteer at organizations that help women in need. Most recently, we attended the March for Life in Washington, D.C. It is truly inspiring to witness hundreds of thousands of young people from across the nation standing in defense of those who do not have a voice. These young people are the future of the pro-life movement. With our passion and energy, my generation, guided by those who have come before us, will continue to fight tirelessly for the end of abortion. We will not stop until everyone born and pre-born has been given their liberty, their right to choose, and their right to life. We have two more uh, speakers, but we're going to stop for a moment, and we're going to have about three or four of our state legislators. We're so glad you're here, and we appreciate your patience, but I'm sure you like hearing these speeches too. We do. You just introduce yourself and your district. Thank you, and I, I do enjoy being here and hearing the speeches, and I'll keep mine short. My name's Richard Heath. I represent District 2, which is Graves County, Kentucky. I'm a member of the Trace Creek Baptist Church, and I am pro-life. I have uh, co-sponsored the, the previous pro-life bill since I have been here in, in the legislature. I was one of 60 co-sponsors of the pro-life bill that was before the legislature this past session, and I was one of 40 that voted to bring that, that bill to the House floor for a vote. I don't know what happened to the other 20 guys, but because only 40 voted to bring it to the House floor, it did not come out of committee. We're hoping to turn that around this session. I'm Representative James Tipton from Taylorsville. I represent Anderson, Spencer, and a portion of Bullitt County. This is my first year of session, and I'm so honored to be here. Uh, you know, last year, I was here at this rally and I was inspired by the words I heard. Uh, I also had the opportunity to attend the Health and Welfare Committee. Uh, and after I attended that committee and I saw the outcome and the defeat that was handed, I was more convicted than ever that God called me to run for this office to come and fight for the life of the unborn. And you have my word that as long as I'm a member of this body, I will fight with every breath I have to defend the life of the unborn. 
I'm uh, State Representative Jonathan Shell. I represent the 71st District, which is Garrett, Rockcastle, and uh, the western half of Madison County. Since I've been here, I've also supported the pro-life legislation through co-sponsorship, and not only co-sponsored, but also helped to try and push that bill along. And we have to get that bill passed. We have to start saving these unborn children here in Kentucky. I love the Lord. Thank you all for being here. I uh, just want to say a quick note from those of you that uh, have representatives that may not be here. Uh, some of them are in committee. And Russell Weber and Senator Jared Carpenter also asked me to say something on their behalf. And, and we just appreciate you all being here in the state capitol. And, and we need to get these bills passed. Thank you all. Hello, everyone. I'm Donna Mayfield, and I'm a representative from Clark County, and I represent part of Northern Madison County as well. And I really appreciate all of you all being here and your compassion and conviction for this issue. I am a born-again Christian. Um, God put it in my heart, so I know it for a fact, that life begins at the second of conception, and it ends when he sees fit. And I am proud to stand in Frankfurt and boldly support our efforts here. And we need to stop the politics that is going on with blocking this and the silence that we're having to endure. And I am too a member of the Fierce 40 that stood up and put our money where our mouth was and voted yes on that issue. So I appreciate all you all do for the pro-life cause and may God bless us all. I'm Regina Bunch, state representative of the 82nd district, which is all of Whitley and five precincts of Laurel. I stand before you today to proudly tell you that I will be an advocate and a supporter of all legislation in regards to the right to life. I am one of the 40 that stood proudly last session and will do so until we get this matter solved and this legislation passed. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, everybody. I'm much like James Tipton. I'm a first time legislator. I'm not sure which one this is. I'm a first time legislator. And one of the main reasons I got into this was because the man that I ran against, who has been here for 22 years and says he's 100% pro-life, that Democratic man never once voted for life. Never once did he ask for life to come out of committee. Never once did he have his own bill to try to push his Democratic party to life. My friends, that's not 100% life. That's 100% scared, okay? I will not stand for that, and I decided with much prayer through God, I'm a member of Sermons Valley Baptist Church, and, and the people that, I, that supported me said, you got to do this. And I, so I'm here to just defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, Father. And um, so please, if you could do anything, reach out to your legislators. Those of you in Democratic districts, we deserve, the children deserve an up or down vote on this issue. We're not getting it. Call your legislators. Up or down vote. Thank you. I'd like to present Sarah Hicks. She won the Right to Life Educational Foundation of Kentucky 2014 Oratory Contest. She's a winner from Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Sarah. It is overwhelming when we think of the tragedy of the number of babies who have been murdered in the last 42 years. So many people ask themselves, what can I really do? Alone, it can seem impossible, but together, we can and will make a difference. We must all stand together and fight for life. Everyone has the right to choose what is right, but no one has the right to choose what is wrong and harms others. No matter what the circumstance, only God has the power over life. All of our choices have consequences. The choice to allow abortion has warped our country for 42 years, and that should make us afraid. The world has fed us numerous lies about how wonderful and freeing abortion is for women and society. But we know the truth. Abortion hurts women, kills babies, and destroys society. We know that from the moment of conception, a new life has been formed. We must work to protect life by sending letters to our senators and representatives, organizing rallies like this, expressing our views through social medias, and most importantly, praying to change the hearts and minds of the people who support abortion. The only way we will win this fight is with faith and hope. 
We need to carry the torch and bring light where there is darkness and life where there is death. We cannot be discouraged. We must fight with patience, kindness, love, and compassion. As Father Richard John Newhouse said, we shall not weary, we shall not rest. A few words. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. My name is Lynn Beckler. I'm a state representative representing District 4 in Western Kentucky, the counties of Crittenden, Caldwell, Livingston, and part of Christian. I am humbled to have been given a voice to speak for the unborn. My biggest regret since I've been in the legislature is that no pro-life legislation has been passed. I am not sure that the slippery slope down the mountain that you so eloquently spoke of toward the moral decay of our country started with Roe versus Wade, but I am convinced that that was a, a very big part of it. I pledge to you that as long as I am honored to serve in the Kentucky House of Representatives, I will be a strong advocate for the unborn. Thank you. I don't think it'll raise up, so I'll duck down. I'm uh, Representative Russ Meyer. I'm first year uh, representative uh, representing the 39th district. I'm the Democratic representative serving Jessamine and Fayette counties. And I had an uh, opportunity uh, to be where you all are when I was in elementary school and uh, walk up Capitol Avenue from Good Shepherd School here in Frankfurt and uh, come to the uh, Right to Life rallies uh, back in the 70s. And uh, you know, I'll never forget those days and I'll carry them on and I'm honored to have the opportunity to serve and carry on right here in the House of Representatives. So thank you for being here today. Four, these are really some choice legislators that we have here now. Not that they all weren't because they are. <laughs> But these faces are familiar, they're very admired, and will you come one by one to the microphone? Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Margie. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. That's the problem. I was a little worried there that uh, she wasn't going to greet me in a friendly way. <laughs> I thought this was a friendly confine, a friendly gathering, but then she called me a choice. <laughs> and I was reminded by my colleagues that, that, that I'm not a pro-choice legislator, I'm a pro-life legislator. <laughs> and Pastor, you talked about moving a mountain. And I've been over here just a couple of, well, more than that. I've been over here quite a while. And it's good to see some of my friends from Lexington, Hilda, Steve, Ed, a lot of good friends from Lexington. It's great to see you, but I must confess I'm disappointed that another year has come and I've got to see you again. It's sad that we have to go through this every year, but it's a mountain that needs to be moved. And Pastor, you reminded me of something that's very important for those of us who do get discouraged from time to time. And I've got some legislators here who, who would have perhaps more reason to be discouraged than anybody that I know in this whole building. And I'd add myself to that list. Because standing before you right now are legislators who have time and time again stuck their head up out of the gopher hole, out of the fox hole, to file discharge petitions, to argue for life, to do everything we can, and if anybody would have a reason to be discouraged, it might be some of us. If I don't hold the record for filing discharge petitions, Joe Fisher does. So, Pastor, when you were talking about a mountain, it reminded me of something that I need to keep in mind because I'm 
get frustrated from time to time about all this, but we have to remember that it's only going to be in God's timing, not ours. And reconciling yourself to that, appreciating that, will give you the encouragement you need to go forward. Because until the Lord reaches down His mighty hand over this General Assembly to grasp the hand of that little unborn baby, we're not going to get what we need. So I would encourage you to pray about that for this next year. And for this session, pray that the Lord will do a miracle here and we'll have at least one piece of pro-life legislation. I would like to not have to retire from this job until we can stand in this rotunda one more time, at least one more time, and see a piece of pro-life legislation passed. Thank you and God bless you. And now, Representative Tim Moore, very, very talented speaker. <laughs> oh, there you go. We right. have you on tape. Well, well, after that, I don't know if I can live up to uh, not only Stan Lee's oratory, but the introduction. But I'm honored to be here today, and I agree with Stan. I, I look forward to the day when we don't come to rally on behalf of life, but we come to celebrate a victory yes. for life. And Lord, may it come soon. One of, the things, one of the things that I've learned over the years, and I so appreciate Kathy being here faithfully, is that our advocacy is not just for legislation. This is important, and your presence here is important. But our advocacy as believers, and by that I mean Christians who believe in life and others who partner with us to stand for the cause of life and of Christ in this place, we also recognize that there are young mothers and fathers, always a father, who find themselves in a circumstance where they don't know how they are going to see a path forward. But we know that there is a way that they can choose life and have an eternal award, not only by virtue of giving life and of bringing a new baby into this world, but of choosing right. And so I would encourage everyone here, if you are not already a supporter of crisis pregnancy centers, please do so. Please send out the message and demonstrate through your advocacy and your support that there is a better choice. And the third thing that we recognize is that there are people who have tragically become victims of an advocacy of death, and they are not only perpetrators of the terrible horror of abortion, but they are victims themselves, and they learn and live to regret that choice. And we, who have been forgiven, need to declare that there is a message of forgiveness and love that they too can take part in. I am so hopeful every year that this will be the year, that this will be the year when the Lord answers all of our prayers. Mm -hmm.